Hello, this is Wampire. For today's lesson, we're going to be working with the palm stick. It's also called the pocket stick, and it's also called the kubotan. All right, so normally what we have here is your keys are going to be attached right here, but we're not going to cover that for now, and I'm just going to solely focus on just using this thing by itself. All right, so the main idea here is we're going to be using it like so, where the bottom a little bit is sticking out, and we're going to be using it like a jab. Now, this may seem extremely offensive to use it as a jabbing strike like so, uh, where I'm striking with this part right here, this part, boom, like that. That may seem very offensive, but the idea here is if you look at boxing, kickboxing, and MMA, if you have a good jab, it makes it difficult for your opponent to come in. And that's the whole idea because this is self-defense. We're interested in survival. So if you could maintain the distance and keep them away with your jab, then that's really what we're looking for. We don't want to get hurt. We don't want them to come close. So if we keep the distance, create some space and run away. That's the whole idea. So that's why we're going to be focusing on developing a jab. So the main idea for the jab here is that this weapon is on the front side. All right. And that's the side. See, this is the side that I'm attacking with. This is the side that has the weapon. This this is the side that's in the front. So from here, I'm going to be throwing my jab like so. So I throw the jab, boom. And notice I'm moving. I don't stay here and go jab, jab, jab like this. I jab and I get out of there. That's the main thing. So I could step in and jab and then get out. Make sure you get out. So boom, boom. And you want to be mobile. This hand is here to help you push them off to cover up if necessary. And once again, jab. So one, two, three, boom. And get out. One, two, get out, get out, boom, boom. Okay, so the next idea is we're going to be working off the jab. So we're going to throw the jab, boom, and then you could do quick strikes, boom, boom. So smaller circles. This, once again, comes from the sticks, comes from the escrima, all the stick training that we do. So the first one, this could be a solid straight in strike, boom, like this. And then we're going to follow it up with some quicker circular strikes just to make it more difficult for them to come in. Their instinct, once you hit them hard, their instinct may be to hit you back. But when you boom, boom, when you pepper, when you do some pepper moves like that, it may make it a little bit harder for them to follow through or to chase you, to pursue you after that. So we have that boom, one solid strike, and boom, boom, two quick ones like so. So from there, we're going to add... After these two quick circular strikes, we're going to add even more Eskrima techniques. And this is where we could go into our X strike right here. We can go from the outside, boom, heading towards the inside, and then outside. So anything going into between the two shoulders right here, this is our inside strike, and this is outside. Or we could go the reverse way. We could go this way and this way. So I don't want to confuse you there with terminology, but... You're making an X, so you can make the X with the right hand first, right side going this way, or you can go this way, and then the outer hand coming in last. So that's up to you. But the idea here is when we're using a, a stick, this is going to be a slash, right? When we make the X with a stick, this is a slash, and with a knife, this is also a slash, or this could be a stab. If you're holding it in the reverse grip, this is two stabs right there. With something like this, the Kubotan, where it has a small point like this, what we're doing is we're scraping. And we want to scrape the face. Why do we want to scrape the face? Is because later on, it's going to be easier to identify the assailant because you're going to mark their face. All right, so one more time. You're going to throw your jab like so and make sure you retract it. We, re we retract it here because if they try to grab, boom, you're here. You're still covered up. So that's number one. The next thing to practice, boom. Boom. The next thing to practice is to go boom, boom, boom. So you're going to throw one and then two quick circular strikes. So one, one, two. One, one, two. So one big one and then one, two. Like so. One big, one, two. And then the next one is to go one, one, two. Boom. There's my X strike. So one, one, two, X strike. One, one, two, X strike. One large strike, two quick ones, and then here's the X. 
All right, so oftentimes what happens is when you have a knife or when you even have a stick or pretty much any kind of weapon in your hand, you forget about using your hands themselves as weapons. Okay, so this is nice right here to be using this, using the kubotan for striking, okay? But don't forget that you could also use your fist. So if they end up in an angle, a weird angle, or they're too close, then you should be able to use, boom, your normal fists right here as well. So if you have a knife and you're slashing, stabbing, and they're able to make it through and it's a little too close, then you should be able to punch. Boom. Boom. Okay. You're still, your fists are still there. Your knuckles are still available. So don't forget about that. So in order to not forget about that, let's go ahead and put that into practice. All right. So this is how we're going to do it. We're going to throw the jab. Boom. And then one, two. And then from here we have the knuckle. So we're going to throw in the knuckle and knuckle, all right? So right here, this is hammer fist using the kubotan, and then quick two quick strikes with the kubotan once again, knuckle, knuckle, all right? So this is to help us remember that we have other tools that we need to be using. Elbows, knees, should be able to use everything, kicks as well. But this is a quick reminder that right here, even with your own hands, even if you have weapons in your hand, that you could still use your knuckles. All right, so one more time. So right here, boom, using the kubotan. One, two, two more strikes with the kubotan. Knuckle, knuckle. All right, so boom, using hammer fist with the kubotan. Two quick strikes right there. Knuckle, knuckle. So one, one, two, knuckle, knuckle. One, one, two, knuckle, knuckle. All right, so if you haven't trained your knuckles and you're not really confident about using your, your knuckles, your fist for punching, Okay, because uh, the human head can be quite strong. So in that case, if you're worried about your hand, go ahead and use a palm strike. Okay, this hand right here, it's pretty much fixed in the fist position. Plus, it's the hand in the front. So you, the power can be more limited. So we're not going to worry about that. So right here, you can do boom, same thing, using the kubotan. One, two, knuckle, quick knuckle shot. And then over here, you could substitute with a palm strike if you're worried about breaking your knuckles. So one more time. One, one, two, knuckle, bam, palm strike. All right, so last but not least is a quick lecture on uh, pressure point striking. Uh, when talking about this, I think that uh, is one of the things that's commonly taught is the pressure point striking. Um, you know, I pretty much am not against any kind of technique or any kind of style. What I am interested in, however, is to make it better. All right. Uh, I'm not saying that there's something wrong with it, but the person needs to evolve it and needs to put in the practice and experience, not just practice the technique the way it's taught and that's it. They need to really uh, make it their own. I believe that that is very, very important. So one of the things that I highly recommend in my case and the way that I teach it is that I like to combine the pressure point strikes with something else. Okay, so in this case, you know, if you want to target areas like this, the temple, all right, uh, over here, you know, behind the behind the jaw or, you know, this area. And if you want to target those kinds of areas, that's fine. But if you see the way that I'm doing it, I'm not just doing this and targeting an area right there and then watching it, you know, and see, is that going to be enough? No, I'm doing combinations here. Boom, boom. And I have so many other tools that I'm going for. This is mixing with the boxing. Here's the kick, the Muay Thai, the knees coming in, boom, boom, the punches again, and the Kubotan's being mixed in, and I'm doing pressure point strikes as well. So I'm not relying just on pressure point strikes. There's so many other things to help me, you know, make the whole thing work together. So I'm using footwork, you know, I'm using defensive and offensive strategies from boxing. You see what I'm saying? And, and there's a whole bunch of combos mixed in as well. So it's not just relying on this area where I'm pressing against that and that's it, you know? Uh, same, same with the joint locks, joint manipulation type techniques. So if somebody gets, gets me in a bear hug, you know, uh, I think what's traditionally taught is you're going to hit them on the hand right here, you know, on, on the small bones or a pressure point strike area right there and cause some pain. They let go and then they go into the technique. Uh, rather than doing something like that, I would once again combine it with other martial arts styles like judo 
or jujitsu where they grab me in a bear hug and the first thing I'm concerned about is I don't want to get picked up and slammed into the wall. I don't want to get picked up and slammed to the ground. I don't want that to happen. So I'm defending that using jujitsu, using grappling, wrestling moves to stop that. As I'm doing that, I will do the pressure point strikes and to try to help break their grip using wrestling moves combined with the pressure point strikes. You see, so it's not just pressure point strikes alone. So that's the, the best advice I could give you guys. I do feel that it can definitely, uh, the, the knowledge of pressure points can help you with your striking game. So if you're like a kickboxer, it can help you out there. And if you're a grappler and you're doing submission grappling, doing joint locks and chokes, it can help you there as well. So anyway, that's my two cents. Thank you for watching and take care, folks.